Hi all, it's Joe Wilkins, author of Ces Montagnes à Jamais, and like you, I'm devastated that Quai du Polar Festival has been cancelled. I know it's for all the right reasons though, that we got to stay home, uh, that we have to keep one another safe, even across the globe. So I understand, but I know, oh, I'm devastated. Um, so I wanted to reach out and just share a little bit with you, and I'm excited to see what the other authors and other invitees and guests who are going to be there are going to share over this weekend. So here's a short reading um, from the English version of my book, Fall Back Down When I Die. Um, we're going to pick up with the main character, Wendell, as he's leaving the sentencing of his cousin and on the way home, and he stops at a roadside bar. Um, I wanted to read this selection because I think it highlights for me um, some of the attributes of rural noir, noir that comes out of the country, that comes out of the landscapes of the western United States and the midwestern United States, and that is distance, and that is night, and that is um, lives bent towards the wrong things too often, as well as an edge of danger, um, an edge of the one decision that might bring it all down. So here's from Fall Back Down When I Die. From the highway, all that announced the place was a smear of neon in the dark, quick flare of bare bulbs. But Wendell knew where it was. He pulled the, he pulled the love up out front of the Antlers, an old roadhouse between Roundup and Delphia, and killed the engine. The truck ticked and settled at on of moths, cut and spun above the muted, tinny music coming from inside the bar. A coyote howled. Another answered the first. Wendell had ironed his blue jeans last night, left Rowdy with Carol early this morning, and driven along the river valley and through the mountains and then south across the Comanche Flats. Sage and bunch grass bejeweled with the season's first frost, the blue leaves and dry stems sharp and bright in the rising light and down through the heights around the rim rocks and onto the gray one-way streets that always made him so nervous, hands hard and slick on the wheel, before finally pulling into the lot behind the sandstone courthouse in downtown Billings. They hauled Lacey in wearing an orange jumpsuit and handcuffs, didn't take their time at all, sentencing her to three years for possession of methamphetamine and one year for child endangerment and willful neglect. Lacey never once looked at him, never once even looked up that he could tell it was another person sitting there was all he could think. The Lacey he knew would have raised hell, would have pleaded not guilty, would have cursed them, demanded to see her son. Ever since she'd come to live with his mother and him, she was the one out front, the one no one could catch. Her senior year at the district track meet, there were only three girls running the 800, so they lined them up with the boys. When to watch from the sideline, he'd been running first in the district, but even, even had his eye on state, but then he'd turned his ankle and torn some ligaments, and now he was just hoping He'd be all healed up by next year's basketball season, his senior season. In the noonlight, the boys and girls stood there together, quiet, focused, nervous, everyone but Lacey anyway. She was all spit and giggle, winking at the boys and poking fun at the girls. And two minutes and 9.23 seconds after the gun sounded, she broke the ribbon, besting every boy in the race and setting a district record. There was even an article in the Billings paper, a picture of her making her hand into a pistol, shooting someone outside the frame of the photo. That's me, Wendell remembered, thinking. Though he wasn't sure, couldn't picture who it was Lacey had been shooting at. A few days later, just before the divisional meet, Lacey jumped into the silver Mustang of her new boyfriend, a 30-year-old, down from Roundup, and didn't come home that night. Didn't show for school the rest of the week or for the divisional meet in the day she should have been competing at state. Wendell loaded his rifle, stowed it in the rack in his love, and drove to Roundup. He felt betrayed, as if what he'd thought mattered hadn't, as if the years spent pushing each pushing each other on the court and on the field were only years and not a kind of promise. At a gas station, he ran into the boyfriend, who was buying Doritos, Mountain Dew, and Sudafed. Wendell waited until he was crossing the lot that dragged him behind the building by his long, ratty hair. When the boyfriend tried to run, Wendell slugged him one, two, three times while he rolled and bled in the weeds. Wendell got his rifle chambered around and stuck the barrel in the hollow of the son of a bitch's neck. He blubbered and told Wendell he didn't know where Lacey was. And he was looking for too that she'd stolen his car. The cops found the Mustang weeks later, abandoned on the side of a highway between Billings and Laurel. But Wendell and his mother didn't see Lacey again until the next winter, in the middle of his last disappointing basketball season, when she came walking down the gravel road to the trailer with her hair hacked short, came walking down the gravel, wrung out and half starved and three months pregnant, and without an explanation for any of it, not her disappearance or the pregnancy or the gummy squiggle of scar beneath the right eye. Thwap of pool ball, Gravel of men's laughter, smoke of a wood stove, sour warmth of beer, and bodies, all of it washed over Wendell as he stepped into the antlers. He paused a moment in the doorway, and it felt good and right, even necessary, 
He took his bearings and slid onto an open stool and ordered a shot of beam with a beer back. The whiskey rolled through him and bloomed in his gut. He closed his eyes with satisfaction. After his mom's death, he'd made his own trouble in bars and had to stop frequenting them for a while. But he had to pick up Rowdy later and didn't intend to start all that again. For now, he just wanted to enjoy the burn, wash it down with a couple of big, cold chugs of watery beer. Lean into the three-drink swirl that might swirl his last glimpse of Lacey away. Thanks for listening. Thanks for the invitation. I so hope to make it to the festival someday, and I'm excited to see what it